Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shayna and I hope you're all doing well. Today, as you can tell from the title, we are going to be discussing the new launch from Prada, Prada Paradox. So if that is something you're interested in, just keep on watching. Those of you that are returning subscribers, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching my videos. And for those of you that are new, I hope you would consider subscribing if you're into fragrance and skincare related content. So let's just get into the video. Okay guys, so here is Prada Paradox. I am a sucker for gorgeous packaging, and as you can see, I would consider this to be very gorgeous packaging. <laughs> Beautiful light pink juice, has the Prada on the top right there. Let's just get a close up. So this is the three fluid ounce bottle. This is an eau de parfum concentration. I was just really intrigued when I first saw this because obviously the packaging is uh, not your standard shape. It's the iconic triangular Prada logo, which I think is such an awesome idea. Um, and I mean, look at the stunning juice color. So, I mean, we can go on and on and on <laughs> about how pretty the packaging is, but what's more important or equally as important is the juice inside. So let me just give you a quick story time on why I did end up picking this up. So I was at Bloomingdale's and I wasn't intending, I had no idea that this had even come out. Um, I was just walking around the fragrance counters and I saw that this had a pre-order like sticker on it. So I was like, oh, okay, this is a new fragrance. Um, so I tested it on just a blotter. I tested a few other fragrances. I didn't end up buying anything. And then I just went about my day at the mall. It was an outdoor mall. So, and it was a really hot day. So I was pushing the stroller around and I had the little blotters that I tried all the fragrances on inside the cup holder. So I was just pushing the stroller around. And as I was walking, I kept on getting these whiffs of what I didn't know at the time was this fragrance, but I just kept on getting these beautiful whiffs. And I finally stopped and was like, okay, I need to figure out what fragrance smells so good. So um, I smelled all the different blotters and I was like, oh my gosh, it's this Prada Paradox. It was a surprisingly strong perfume. Um, strong in the sense that I was catching whiffs of it on the blotter as I was walking around outside on a hot day. Um, so clearly this perfume has a strong sillage. So yeah, I was just really intrigued after that. And, and I kind of sat on it for a little while. I didn't go and rush and purchase it. I talked to my sister about it. She said that she was interested in it. And I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to pick it up. It sounds kind of generic by the notes. So I remembered back to when I was at the mall and how lovely it smelled on the blotter. So I go, maybe I should give it a chance since like my sister was interested in it. I was like, maybe I should just pick it up. So I, I ended up picking it up obviously and so here it is and instead of doing a unboxing which I love doing unboxings um, I wanted to really give you guys my full thoughts and when I do unboxings it's really hard to really test the, the perfume out because you're unboxing it for the first time and I didn't have any samples so I couldn't really tell you and I really apologize for the screaming in the background it's really hard to film when you have babies at home so Anyways, so to give you guys just my quick overall impression and feelings about this fragrance is I am a fan. I really, and I mean really enjoy this fragrance. I am shocked at how much I like this because, you know, to be quite frank, I'm never usually that blown away by designer fragrances these days. And that's not because they're designer fragrances. It's just because they are meant to be mass appealing and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I love designer fragrances. I love niche fragrances. I just think that, you know, people shouldn't necessarily expect a designer fragrance to be groundbreaking. Not, not every designer fragrance is going to be as unique and sort of pressing the boundaries as, as a Terry Mugler creation, like the ones from the past, like Angel and, and Alien and all that. But I mean, I don't know. I was just really, really impressed by this. So I think the perfumers did an amazing job creating something that's going to be definitely mass appealing because it's beautiful. And I just think they nailed it. So in my opinion, for a designer fragrance, that's a home run. So anyways, that's my overall, just a quick take on the fragrance. So now let's just get into what you are really interested in. And that is the breakdown of the main accords, the perfumers and the notes. Okay, so the main accords we have for Prada Paradox are white floral, citrus, amber, sweet, vanilla, fruity, powdery, musky, fresh, and animalic. 
And to just read a quick little blurb that I thought was interesting on the Fragrantica page for this, it says, reinventing freshness with the first Neroli bud extraction for Prada to capture the flower's fresh dimension. Reinventing sensuality with Ambrofix, a bio-converted amber revealing a vibrant warmth. Reinventing intensity through a new revolutionary musk molecule, the serenolide, for an intense yet subtle and comfortable trail noticeable right from the top. So this is available in a 30, 50, and 90 mil. And then it also says in a 100 mil refill. So that's interesting. I haven't seen the refill, so um, maybe they're gonna be coming out with that. So I thought that was kind of cool. And the perfumers behind this are, and I'm going to butcher these names, so I apologize in advance, Antoine Maison Du, Shamala Maison Du, and Nadege Le Garlantizek. Okay, guys, so the notes we have, top notes of pear, tangerine, and bergamot. <laughs> then we have middle notes of orange blossom, jasmine sandbach, neroli essence, and neroli. And then in the base, we have bourbon vanilla, white musk, amber, and benzoin. Okay, so let me give you my thoughts. I have everything written down. I wanted to make sure that when I was reviewing this myself that I remembered exactly everything that I was thinking of when I was testing this. So first of all, a lot of people are saying that this reminds them so much of Valentino's Donna Born in Roma and also um, Giorgio Armani's My Way. I personally don't find a lot of similarities between this and those two. I get it. But to me, when I first sprayed this, the very first perfume that came to mind was actually Mon Guerlain's Bloom of Rose EDT. They have the exact same, almost the exact same opening. And the Neroli that they used in this is the exact same Neroli that they used in Mon Guerlain because they are just identical. So I think that if there's any perfume out there that this resembles, it's definitely, at least in the beginning, uh, it definitely resembles Mon Guerlain's Bloom of Rose EDT. Not the EDP, the EDT. So let me give you a rundown of how this performed on me. So I first sprayed this on at 9.30 in the morning. And as I said, it first instantly took me right to Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDT. Then after the first 15 minutes of wearing this, went by, that's when it started to change. So it wasn't Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDT anymore. It started to become its own thing. It started to become sweeter, not as, not centered so much around Neroli as Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDT. That's such a long name. So let's just spray this together right now so that I can refresh my memory. Yeah, you guys, it is so similar to Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDT when you first spray it. Okay, so like I said, when you first spray this, I'm getting that Neroli, I'm getting a sweetness from the pear, and I'm getting this bright, zesty, the zesty citrus, citrus accord, which I'm guessing is coming from the tangerine. So you're getting this Neroli, but it's mixed with this sweet, orangey, fruity and floral combination. Okay, so that's what I'm getting in the, in the very beginning. And then after that 15 minutes goes by, it becomes sweeter and less neroli heavy. And then once this finally starts to dry down, so within like the first hour and a half of wearing it, I notice that it goes from this beautiful neroli orange blossom jasmine accord down to more of like just a sweet orange blossom with pear. So it's like a sweetened, it's like imagine orange blossom, but then make it sweeter. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like a strong pear note. It's more orange blossom, but like a sweet orange blossom. And then that's what you're going to be smelling for, I would say, the next four to five hours and it is actually surprisingly strong. So I was not expecting this to be a very, you know, long lasting perfume just because most designer fragrances these days, they're, I would say, moderate longevity. Um, this is definitely a lot longer than moderate. I would say this is on the longer lasting side um, because I sprayed this on at 9.30 and then five hours later, I was still projecting I could tell that I was still projecting this perfume. So it really doesn't turn into a skin scent until like maybe six to seven hours later. And then when it becomes a skin scent, so when it's completely dried down, like I said, about six hours later is when this becomes more of this sort of slightly vanillic ambery musk. 
um, with the musk definitely dominating. I wouldn't say that this is very heavy on the vanilla in the dry down. It's sweetened by the vanilla and the amber, but I would say overall what I get on my skin is a very long lasting musk that for some reason just sticks around on my skin for hours. So like I said, I sprayed this on at 9.30 in the morning. I took a shower in the evening and then I woke up the next morning and I could still smell the musk left over on my wrist. So I don't know how they were able to create such a long lasting perfume with this type of a scent profile because I wouldn't say that this is, you know, necessarily your strongest in terms of scent profiles. Most super long lasting perfumes generally have something in the base that is going to make it last eternally. Um, and this, for some reason, the musk that they used in this is one of the longest lasting musks I have ever experienced. So yeah, um, I am really, like I said, impressed with this perfume. I'm impressed with the performance. I'm impressed with just the overall scent. I think it's absolutely stunning. Like I said, I think the perfumers nailed it. So for those of you out there that know that you don't like Orange Blossom or you don't like Neroli, I think you should still give this a try, at least get a sample because I think because of the Jasmine, it helps to sort of temper that orange blossom and give it so give it more of just a white floral accord as opposed to just like straight orange blossom so that's just my opinion on it because when i smell it i do get the orange blossom but then i also do get the jasmine so it's like kind of like a nice combination of both but like i did say in the beginning what i'm getting from it is a sweet orange blossom with a little bit of jasmine so if you're really worried about it i think you should definitely just get a sample and see first before you you know, I never, I never really recommend blind buying, although I do that myself. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I would just say try to get a sample of this first. But honestly, like I would say this is very blind buy worthy. And I feel like this is going to be something that people are going to be gifting to others, especially, you know, we're coming up to the holiday season. This is not one of those fragrances that has a necessary season associated with it. This is kind of just one of those that you can wear at any time to any occasion, whether it be brunch or just out with friends at dinner, just going about your day. But I think this is just one of those fragrances that is that could become a signature scent. It's just an overall very crowd-pleasing, very beautiful fragrance that I think a lot of people are going to end up liking and I'm glad I didn't sleep on it because I love this so much and I'm so impressed with the longevity of it. I was just, that is probably my number one most impressive takeaway from this perfume is just how long lasting it is and it has a really beautiful scent trail. So like I was saying in my little story time in the beginning, I was really shocked at how beautiful of a sillage I was getting just from the blotter that was in my stroller like so it's definitely going to perform. I just get this beautiful sweet white floral with a little bit of vanilla and amber mixed in and this beautiful musk. I think the musk is really what does it for me though. I'm a huge musk fan so um, yeah the fact that this has musk that really lasts long I think is what is helping this fragrance to really ground it out and just make it something that is going to last on your skin. So yeah, I think this is a very safe gifting option. So um, for those of you that like to gift fragrances, which it's one of my favorite things to do is to gift fragrances to people. My sort of my quick conclusion to this fragrance is that it is very long lasting. It's a beautiful, sweet orange blossom and jasmine combination with slightly ambery, vanillic that's sweetened up by that beautiful pear and that zesty tangerine. And like I said, if you are somebody who enjoys Mongerlan Bloom of Rose EDT, I think this is one that you are really going to love and it is not going to be redundant because it really, the resemblance only really lasts for the first 15 minutes. And then after that, it becomes its own beautiful fragrance. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little review. And please let me know if you plan to pick this beautiful gem up or if you have already, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.